Jen, and today I wanted to show you something fun and different that you can do with the cut files that I have in my shop, particularly this one that's called Floral Swag, and I just added it to my shop yesterday. And it's this pretty just little floral cluster with some leaves, and you can definitely just cut it out as is, and it looks really pretty. I'll show you that here in just a second. But I wanted to show you how you can make uh, print and cut as well as your own patterned paper. So I've done both and I'm going to show you how you can do that. So the cut files come in in PNG and SVG format. If you have Silhouette Studio Designer Edition, you can just open up the SVG. If not, you'll need to open up the PNG and trace it. So I have the PNG open. So what you do is you just go to the trace window, which is up here at the top. It looks like a little butter butterfly. You choose select trace area, and then you just drag a box over the shape. Okay, so you're gonna unclick high pass filter, and then you can see the whole shape turns yellow, and then click trace. And then you're left with just the intricate outline of the shape. So now what we wanna do is color it in, and I like to pull images on Pinterest that are like color, um, color schemes and I have a board on my Pinterest account called um, color love or something like that and I have a bunch of color schemes pinned there so I just pulled a couple off of there and I'm just gonna open one of them up so it's got like a photo with a bunch of colors underneath it so I'll just go ahead and open it I have it saved to my desktop and I'll choose this one right here and here you can see the color scheme. So now what I want to do, it opens up it in a, it up in a separate, um, like on a separate window. So what I'm going to do is just copy and paste it into my floral swag window. There we go. So now I just I just did Command C Command V on my Mac. So now what I want to do is fill in the color on this shape. So you can see that right now it's all one piece. In order to fill it in, we want to separate the pieces. So what we're gonna do is right click and release compound path. And that's going to make it into all of these tiny little pieces that now we can fill in. So what I think the easiest way is to fill in the largest shape first, the background shape. So I'm gonna click on that. And I'm gonna make the outline kind of a a grayish color. So I'll just go to the fill color window and click on a gray color. And you can see that it's filled it all in. Now those other little pieces are resting on top. We're going to fill those in with color as well. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. I'm just going to go to the little magnifying glass up here with the plus sign that has kind of like the little plus sign above it. Um, and then you just drag over the area that you want to see and it will zoom in on just that area. Okay, so this is the part that's a little bit time consuming, but I feel like it's totally worth it in the end and it, and you can save it so that you don't have to do it over and over again. What you're going to do is click on the individual shapes. So you can see I can click on just the inside part of this leaf. And what I'm going to do is click on the color picker and choose a color and it will fill it in. Now that I've got that color over here in my color picker window, what I'm going to do is choose all of the other pieces that are similar to that, that I want colored that, that same color. So you can just hold down your shift key and click on the various pieces that you want to have that same coloring. And what I'm going to do is do all of the leaves that are kind of those elongated leaves, as well as these ones that are kind of hanging down on the sides. So I'm just clicking the center pieces. If I accidentally click the outside, I'll just keep holding down shift and click it again so it unselect, deselects it. I don't have all of them selected, but I'll just click on that again and you can see how it fills in a bunch of them at once. So there are a few pieces where it's supposed to be white, so it's like an inside space like this one right here. So I'm just going to go ahead and fill that in with white. Same with this one right here. Actually, that's a leaf. <laughs> So like I said, this part is, is a little bit time consuming, but I really do feel like it's worth it. So we're gonna go ahead and fill in all the spaces. So now, why I like to have this color scheme at the top is because I know that when I put all of these colors together, it's going to look pretty. So what I'm gonna do next is color in these flowers 
the roses in the center and I'm going to choose this melon color and select a bunch of the pieces at once not the outside piece and you can see how slowly we'll get a, a beautiful filled in little um, floral swag here so I'm gonna go ahead and fill the, the rest of that in and then I will come back and show you what it looks like when I'm done and then what the next step okay, so will once you're done you might have something that looks like this and you can see that I am I can, I'm able to move the pieces around, which I do not want to be able to do. So what I'm going to do is select the entire thing by just dragging my mouse over the entire thing. And there's a little box at the bottom left that says group selected shapes, and I'm going to choose that. And now it's all one piece. Now I'm ready to do whatever I want with it. So let me show you first how you can change this into a print and cut file. So that would mean that you were gonna print this out and then cut around the outside edges. So what I wanna do in this instance is go to my cut settings window. I wanna see what it's set to cut out right now. But I do not want it to cut all of these little pieces out. So I'm gonna choose no cut. And now it's not going to cut any of this out. Um, the next thing that I want to do is go to my offset window and it's a little hexagon at, up at the top and I'm going to click on offset and you know what it is offsetting you can see there's double lines here it's still capturing those center cuts that I don't want it to so what I'm gonna do is cancel it I am going to ungroup this for just a minute I'm going to choose just the outer shape and I'm going to offset that. So now you can see it's just got this single line. Now you can make this offset as big or as small as you want. It's That's what it's going to cut out. So it'll leave a little white border. So you make that however big or small that you want it to be. And I'll just keep making it smaller until I'm happy with the size that it is and it's just catching up to me a little bit. And then I'll go ahead and click apply. Now, if there are any spaces that you don't want it to cut out, for example, there's this little space here and this little space here, what you can do is while you ha still have that selected, do control right click, or just right click or do control click if, you're, if you don't have an actual mouse, <laughs> and choose release compound path. And then it separates those little pieces and you can delete them. So I'm just going to delete these little pieces that I don't want it to cut out. I'll, of course, you can leave those in if you do want it to cut those things out. Now what I can do is I'm going to select the outside shape. I'm gonna go back to the cut window. This seems complicated maybe at first, but once you get the hang of it, it's really quite simple. Okay, there we go. So now we've got it set to cut. I'm going to regroup everything now. So I am just going to zoom out a little bit. I'm gonna select everything and I'm going to group it just so it's easy for me to move around. I, I always like to go back to the cut settings window to just see exactly if it's going to cut what I want it to. You'll see the red line darkens a little bit and that's how I know that it's, it's going to cut that. So now what I can do is go to my, uh, it's right next to the page settings window, it's the registration marks, and turn it from off to on, to type one. And what that's going to do is give you, it's going to make these little registration marks that when you, when you print it out, it will print the floral, but it will also print the little registration marks, and that makes it so that your your cameo or or your portrait or whatever you're cutting on can recognize um, where to cut. 
And so you could fill up this whole page with cuts. If you need to make the page smaller, if you don't have a 12 by 12 printer, of course you can change the page settings to be um, like letter size or something like that. And then you can go ahead and print this out and then send it to your silhouette. One thing I would mention to you to just make sure of, um, I accidentally turned on the the colors for the lines. So when I printed this out, it printed the red, red cut line around it. It doesn't usually do that. Um, it defaults to not doing that actually. But if, if you find that that happens, let me just show you how to turn it off. So you go to the line style window and at the bottom, there's a little check mark checkbox that says print lines of selected shapes. You just want to make sure that it's unchecked. Okay, so that's how you can do a print and cut. Let me show you something else fun that I did that doesn't require any cutting at all. And you could probably do this in Photoshop as well, but I'm just doing it in Silhouette Studio because that's what I have. But if you wanted to get this shape and fill in the colors in Photoshop, you could sure do that also. So let me just show you, let's see. Okay, so here is where I have made an entire background out of that one cut file. And I have just layered it along the whole background. I've, I've let it hang off the sides. You can see that I just kind of nestled the, the floral swag into the spaces within, it, within itself and just kind of made a little design and pattern. And so you can just copy the shape over and over again and put it on a whole entire sheet of paper and then just print it out. And I printed it 12 by 12, but like I said before, you could print it in the letter size or whatever size that you have. You can make any sort of design and just print it out like this. And it's really fun to do. So those are a couple of the tips that I have. Let me show you now what they look like all cut and printed out. Okay, so here are the printed cut files. I'll show you those first. And I just think they turned out really pretty. I did two different colorways. So this is the one I showed in the video. This one has a little bit deeper of like kind of fall tones maybe. And um, I really like the way that they turned out. And I just printed them and cut them out in several different sizes and just so that I could see what they looked like in different sizes. And I really like the way that they look. So I just really quickly, I don't have a plan for this and this isn't, I have a different plan for this particular photo, but I wanted to show you how you could maybe use them together. So of course you could lay it over the photo like that. You can layer it over the top. You could layer it kind of, on the side like this. So lots of different ways that you could use these and that's the larger one. I think it looks really pretty with, with this color as well. You could just layer it behind it even if you don't wanna see the pieces that are hanging down. I think that looks really cute too. So lots of ways that you can use these cut files. Um, let me show you what the cut file looks like printed out, which I super, super love. So this is what it turned out like on a whole piece of pattern paper. So no cutting involved on this one. And I used that first color scheme. So that's the same cut file. And this is the same size right here. And I think it just looks really gorgeous. I just have some inexpensive white paper and it has the same weight as most patterned papers that you would buy. And I just think it just turned out really, really pretty. I can't wait to use it for a layout and I might cut it up. I might leave it whole. I haven't decided yet. Really quickly, let me show you what the cut file looks like just on its own as a cut So file. here's the cut file just on some white cardstock and it looks really pretty as a cut file as well. I just really love all of the different ways that you can use this. You can use these together. You can use them, you know, apart. I think you could create some really interesting looks with these and I'm just really excited to play around with the different ways that you can use this. So I hope that you have enjoyed this and that you will try out some of these techniques. If you have any questions, I know it can seem a little bit tricky or confusing at first, but once you get the hang of it, it's really super easy and you can do this with any cut file that you might buy, not just mine, of course. So thanks so much for watching and we'll talk to you soon. Mm -hmm.